Hello, everyone. Please ignore the sound of fireworks in the background. That That's just happening. Nothing we can do about that right now. Uh, it is day five? Day five. End of day five. We're just short of 9,000 words, although the, uh, the word count in the bottom corner will now not show that because we've split everything into two chapters. We've got a... <laughs> We've got a friend who uh, likes to be updated when I finish a chapter. It wasn't really fair for me to just have one massive one that'd go on forever. I think you're a reasonable uh, splitting point. I split where I said I would. Um, I don't know. Um, vibes currently? I've not been sleeping well. And there's the whole America situation going on. I think... I'm liking my story, and at this point, if you're not liking your story, you you do have a big problem. But I am really liking it. I do want to know where it's going. I've been trying to think up like a, like a, I don't know, <laughs> a mythos of villains. What's the, what's the uh, collective uh, term for a bunch of Cthulhu's? We've been we've been working on that, and I've enjoyed that. I might, I don't know, I might post on the forums and see if I can get other people to think of uh, abominations for me. But I've got a couple that I like. Anyway, we're gonna we're gonna read the thing before I forget and just waffle for ten minutes. Yeah, I can waffle for more than ten minutes. Uh, we're starting from the beginning of the this block because uh, we changed it. Something creaked in the hallway ahead. And in an eye blink, Zack was already behind her. The light changed sharply as its source started away, and any hope of seeing what caused the noise was destroyed in the sudden action. A moment later, everything was still. Zack froze, still balanced on his toes in case the situation changed and he, need and he needed to sprint again. This is needlessly difficult to read. I don't know what it is. Um, I, I think it's all the ease. Would this... Someone who knows about language better than I do... Is this amount of ease in a row? Changed, he, knee, and dead. Is this just impossible for a human to say, or is it just me? Anyway. April listened intently, but there was no further noise. Zack, she called, not daring to turn around, lest the unidentified creak sneak up behind her. What the hell? I There, there was a... Zack scrambled to explain himself. I don't have a torch, Zack. Right. He was either slow to recognize April's statement as a call to action, or still too frightened to dare advancing another step into the darkness. Just the wind, right? He laughed nervously. It was definitely not the wind. Yeah, probably. Zack advanced extremely slowly, as if each millimeter of shadow was individually suspicious. It took what seemed like an age for him to draw level with April again, and he must have gone even slower as he passed her. The thing about being the one with the light he recognized was that even though he could see nominally further, th further than without it, he was himself extremely vulnerable, incandescent in the dark. From the opposite's perspective, that of his potential observer, he would have been a thick black outline advancing along with a ball of glowing white light. Oh, that were a close one. Don't know if you heard that. There were no further sounds. Do you think that an animal could have gotten in somehow? He whispered backwards. April had no idea. Probably. Probably a rat or something. Zack stopped, remembering that he was scared of rats too. <clears throat> that were a close one. A really little rat, April told him. I'm right behind you. She had advanced to within arm's reach behind her struggling companion. Really shit little rats, Zack Zach muttered out loud, resuming his sedate pace onwards. That's the spirit. He stopped again almost immediately. What now? April asked trying to strike a balance between sounding understanding and impatient. Listen, he snapped. There was a sound. Not the loud, sharp one they'd heard before, but a quiet, constant trickle of unseen motion, like the shifting of sand. It seemed to be growing louder, or possibly closer. This time, April was quick enough to catch Zack a moment be <laughs> This time, April was quick enough to catch Zack a moment before he bolted. He flailed blindly and uselessly against her for a moment, then instinctively swung the light back around at the source of the sound. 
lest something awful pounce from it. The beam held shakily on an empty corridor, the sound persisting weakly for a few seconds, then fading away to nothing. The tension began to fade. Maybe we should go a different way, April decided. The sentence was punctuated by a deafening, metallic scream that seemed to be coming from everywhere. She tumbled to the ground as Zack dashed through her, and had just enough light to see the roof drawing sharply nearer as she toppled backwards. Then there was nothing but black. The hiss resumed, felt now as well as heard, as a shower of tiny pebbles rained over April's head from an unseen breach in the roof above, worn away by either time and negligence or otherworldly interference. It all made a lot more sense now. This bit, I, I had no idea what I was going to write for. Um, I kind of... Stuff needs to happen in the story, and I was trying to think of a way to facilitate that. Um, and then I thought I could make it... I could do a thing that'd be funny, so I just... I don't know. This was a last-minute decision. Probably doesn't work. Uh, you know, we got infinite time to, to fix this, but... If we can draw humor from this, if we can make this, this filler scene enjoyable, then obviously we should do that. The call went out that the management were gone a little after the hour, and by twenty past and by twenty past there was bedlam. First the phones, singled out as responsible for so much of the daily suffering of the workers, were purged. In the beginning the lines were cut or the receivers smashed with blunt objects. But as the riot progressed, they were thrown out of windows and, in at least one case, exploded. A, de a decision was made by the mob to light the remainder on fire, and shortly after that, the building's fire suppression system stripped, and now it was raining indoors as well as out. When the fire was out, the group split off into tribal factions, suddenly hostile to one another. A few of, Rob a few of Rob's colleagues stormed the break room, managing to defend it for what would go on to be the rest of the afternoon. One of them had found a staple gun somewhere, and was popping off rounds at anyone foolish enough to come close. The IT unit, led by Dan himself, now finally fulfilling his ambitions of power, barricaded off a sizable chunk of the floor with whatever bits of cubicle wall had survived the initial stampede, and what electrical appliances were heavy enough to serve as bricks for the parapets. Dan was one of the first to adjust to the new order within Cooper Booth, having from, gone from quiet, polite loathing to open threats and chanted war cries in a matter of about five minutes. Oh, for fuck's sake. Sorry about that. Stuff's going on in the background. Oh, yep, there comes the dog. Hey, Lolis, are you alright? He's scared by the fireworks. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. <laughs> oh, he's really, <laughs> he's really scared. <laughs> I'm going to have to turn the microphone on. He's not got. He's not staying still. Up is all right. Uh, <laughs> I feel like I should probably stop the video. Come on, let's count it. Hey, come here. No, 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 come here. No, don't jump down. Over there. Just sit down. Oh boy, come on. <laughs> Sorry, I'm gonna turn the microphone up again. We're going to try and progress. Ah, uh, Liz, you can't walk there. It's not stable enough. Ah, uh, we were going to try and progress. Just sit down. Don't, don't walk on my desk. It'll fall over. Okay, now, this is a, also a dangerous stunt. Wait, whatever. This is what, this is what's happening now. Come on, Liz, are you going to read this with me? Rob had spent most of the time sitting around in whatever chairs he could find that weren't being repurposed as tinder or barricades, holding his cactus in hand so nothing bad happened to it, and waiting for the whole thing to blow over. 
eventually the workflow got a little heated. The cold war between the sales team and the web design and marketing factions finally boiling over in a sudden display of brutality. Crossbows built from stationery were deployed, and he saw a man take a number two pencil to the eye. <laughs> Come here. No, 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 don't jump down. Don't jump down. No, don't walk on me either. You've... <laughs> After that, he decided to slip out to the landing. Instead. I don't know why there's an instead there. Ah! Adam was waiting there, wielding a fire extinguisher as a bludgeon. All right, Adam, Rob called, unfazed. Adam backed off, raising the extinguisher over his head. Who are you with? He called in a tone that told Rob there was a right and a wrong answer to the question. Sit down, list! Come on! I'm not with anyone, Rob offered. Liz, no, what are you doing? Why would, why would you be doing this? He's tied himself up in my curtains. Is this better? Do you like this? Is this okay? Do, okay. He's just, he's just in the curtains now. Uh, I'm not with anyone, Rob offered calmly. You okay, mate? You look kind of... The man looked very much like he was about to beat him to death in a fit of violent paranoia. Rob tried his best to voice this concern respectfully. Tense. He gritted his teeth, face twisting into a scowl, eyes scanning the space madly. No one. Nobody. I'm just looking out. I'm just looking for a spot to wait all this out, right? Looks like there's enough space for both of us here, if you don't mind, of course. Rob raised his hands in a gesture of peace and backed away into the furthest corner. You won't even know I'm here. Adam considered him silently. Eyes still racing, mind doing likewise. Rob didn't know what madness Adam was currently in the midst of, but he didn't want to... What could he... Okay, that, that's that's my pillow. I'm actually allergic to dogs, so that's... That's a, that's a fun development. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I do have a dog, and I love him very much. Uh, what do you do? This is internet. What do you do if your dog is scared of fireworks and he goes crazy? Is there like a move that you use to to calm him down? Do you just let him do whatever he's doing right now? I think he's trying to bury underneath, burrow underneath my uh, quilt. Oh, no, he's trying to push it on the floor. Can you not? Can you not do that, buddy? Um, where were we? Uh, Rob raised his hands in a gesture of peace and backed away into the furthest corner. Oh, yeah, we were past it. Uh, Rob didn't know what madness Adam was currently in the midst of, but he didn't want to leave him to stew in it. Not while the man was armed. He tried to interject himself again. I'm all on my own, bud. Just looking for a place to sit. As Adam prepared to speak, Rob feared the worst. You're telling the truth, aren't you? He challenged shakily. Gospel, Rob confirmed. Slowly, Adam lowered his weapon. For what seemed like the first time since he'd entered the room, Rob exhaled. No, Adam began to mutter. No, 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 growing louder. No, no. You doing okay, friend? Rob offered politely. Secretly wondering if he'd do better to take his chances in the other Yeah. Secretly wondering if he would do better to take his chances in the other room. The one that was sometimes on fire. You don't know what you've walked into, friend, Adam growled. I'm a marked man. They're all out for me. If Carol from Accounting finds out where I'm hiding, it's all over. Rob nodded along with him, having no idea where this was going. He offered a polite Okay. The show he was still listening. You'll tell no one. Adam ordered. What tell a soul, mate? Rob agreed. Cross my heart. Adam seemed to calm a little. But even in that moment of relative victory, Rob noted him muttering under his breath, working himself back up. Anything I can help you with? He offered count helpfully. That's meant to be Rob, not uh Adam. Should probably make sure that's clear. Yeah, you've 
He's knocking all the little men off my window ledge. Uh, well, <laughs> I can't chance it, Adam decided. Seemingly the last word in an argument he was having with himself. Can't chance what? Rob was, fatally, a moment slow on the uptake. I'm sorry, Rob, Adam told him. The statement felt very final. Okay. Okay? Okay. Okay. Okay? Someone was waffling madly in the darkness very near April, a voice she recognised intimately. Oh, okay. Okay. It took kind of a while for April to realise it was her speaking. The noise stopped as soon as she realised she'd been making it, and there wasn't a sound or sight in the world. She wondered for just a moment if she died in the tunnel collapse. She reached up a hand and it came into contact with the roof worryingly early. She wasn't even standing. We used she a lot here and we did notice it later. Not 100% sure about this scene so far. Zack? She called vainly into the darkness. Zack was gone, his light with him. Zack! It was futile. The sound of shifting dirt had dissipated, being replaced by rhythmic, liquid dripping. The walls were slick, and the ground was becoming damp around her. The stench of rotten fish carried on a familiar sea breeze. This was all wrong. She was losing control. She crawled on hands and knees until the roof was high enough for her to stand, hurrying as fast as she dared through the deeply shadowed path. Presumably heading back the way she'd come, but who could know for sure after the roof had collapsed, and who could have noted every winding side path they'd been able to safely avoid when they had light on their side? After a few minutes of scrambling, she was sure she was going the wrong way. She'd have fallen back up the stairs by now. A minute later, she'd hit a dead end. Zack! God fucking damn it, Zack! She yelled until her throat was sore, but there was still no reply. Salt water was cascading from the roof in places now, the walls growing soaked and slimy. She was sure that on a couple of occasions she'd run face first into dangling strands of seaweed. She focused on controlling her breathing, telling herself that what she was experiencing was nothing more than delusion, but knowing that wasn't fixing it. The problem existed somewhere beyond logic, in the dark and fearful, primal recesses of her brain. And that brain told her that every past trauma she'd ever experienced was happening again now, all at once. And there's that extra line break there. When April concentrated, she could feel the physical sensations that accompanied the mania building. Her thinking was getting fuzzy, her balance tenuous, and the beginnings of what would grow to become a splitting headache were all already present. Her skin itched, and vomit burned at the back of her throat. The room was sharply colder than it had been a moment ago. She felt like she was starting to freeze. She knew concretely that the downpour building around her was just a figment of her imagination. But still it persisted until the water was up to her ankles. The sound of damp footsteps rang out in the hall, menacing and slow, drawing nearer from directions she wasn't even certain existed within the confines of the narrow paths. Zack! The first wisp of cigarette smoke carried by a non-existent wind reached her nostrils, and she went completely still. The footsteps drew even nearer. And then, uh... Liz, stop it! Come back! Knocking more things over and scaring yourself more. Come here. Come on. Yeah, there you go. Just stop for a minute while I finish the video. Is there anything you want to tell YouTube, bud? Anyway, we're going to have a first Zack section next, I think. And we're going to try and make it so that everyone enters the lift at the same time, and then they come out at the same time, and then that's when we're going to have a unified group. But well, until then, folks. I'll be seeing you. Uh, if you've got any dog dog handling tips, I would love to hear them. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to go look after my boy. See ya.